This video is for the overview of the IT8000 Tylock system, and then we're going to cover the basic setup of connecting the tool to the controller. So for the IT8000 system, we have the tool, which is tensioned with an electric motor, and then there's pneumatic cylinders that drive the punch and cut. This is the Siemens PLC. It is a standalone unit, but it can also be connected to your PLC. The operating requirements for this are 80 PSI minimum. There is a built-in regulator that can be regulated down the pressure if required, and then it also accepts just a standard 120 volt outlet. The Siemens controller comes with a HMI that is touchscreen and then physical buttons on the side. On the controller, there are three switches that control the power and the air supply to the tool. On top, there is the e-stop, and when you press it, it makes an audible noise that cuts the air to the tool. It also stops electric power to the motor, so you are able to work on the tool safely. There is also the switch that you use to open the door to access the inside of the controller. By turning that switch, you cut power to the controller and the HMI. Lastly, there is the switch directly underneath the power cable, which turns on and off the controller. On the controller, there are several cables and tubings that feed into it. The green cable is for the HMI, the orange cable is for the tool motor. The gray cable is for the tool data. And then there's the pneumatic valve bank. Note that the different pneumatic tubings have tape on them to designate which location they go into the valve bank. The optional cutoff signal and foot switch are accessible at these two points here. It is the four pin yellow cable that comes with the controller to connect to that. The data during installation is stored on the controller. To access this data, you can either plug in through the USB port on the side of the HMI or through the ethernet port on the side of this controller. For further information, refer to the electronics and HMI video linked in the description. To connect the tool to the controller, there are three main connectors. You have the motor cable, which has two arrows that help align the cable. Right here and right here, you will push this all the way in and then rotate it a quarter turn. Now it is locked in place. There's also the data cable. There is the alignment notch on both sides. So just find the alignment notch and then tighten down to a snug fit. And then lastly, there is the pneumatics tubing that is connected. There is the two notches on bottom and one notch on top. So just align those. And tighten till snug. Now we are going to sync the tool to the controller. Whenever you are doing any maintenance or swapping tools, it is always required that you either cut the air or turn the power off on the controller. To sync the tool, first you will disconnect the power and pneumatics either by hitting the e-stop or turning the controller off. Once you switch the motor cable, the data cable, and the pneumatic tubing to the new controller. You just simply hit change tool, type in the new serial number, hit enter. At this point, you can overwrite one of the tools if you've already used more than five tools. You can enter in the clamp count, or you can just clear it to zero if you've done a PM and you want to start the tool count over. 
and then the tool is ready to go. If you get any errors on this red banner, you simply hit reset error and that clears the error. One thing to note is that if you turn the controller off, when you turn it back on, it looks like it reboots automatically, but it takes about 30 seconds for it to function like normal. You can listen to the air turn on with a click, and at that point you know that it is ready to work. The controller is loaded with preset factory settings. To change those, you can refer to the manual. But the majority of them are in the settings screen. One of the critical things to adjust is the punch pressure setting. If you're going from a 019 band to an 024 inch thick band, how to view your punch pressure is to go into the manual mode screen, enter manual mode, extend the punch, and that it shows the punch pressure right there. To adjust the punch pressure, you will use the regulator on the outside of the box. The other major setting to change is the torque setting right there. See the table for recommended and maximum torque. The speed is also adjustable in the speed setting here. The slow speed and jog speed are not used during normal operations, so the speed is only the max tension speed that adjusts speed. In the manual mode, how to use this is you must be in manual mode. The tool does not function if you're in manual mode, so one tip is to ensure that if the tool does not seem to be working correctly that you are not in manual mode. Once you are in there, you are able to adjust each cylinder independently. And then you can also move the motor forwards and backwards with the pull band and release band setting. There is also the torque move setting that tensions until it hits a set point torque that is labeled here. This torque move is more similar to how the tool runs during operation than the pull band and release settings. Down here you have the contact switch buckle and the tangency buckle which light up when both of those sensors are activated and then you also have the trigger that lights up when you pull the trigger. These are helpful when you are troubleshooting to ensure that these sensors and trigger are being activated correctly. One of the items that you will need is this reset error button on the home screen. Anytime you have a red banner and an error here, it typically just requires you to hit the reset error button and that clears the error. To log data, if you put in a USB drive into the port on the side of the HMI, you can just hit log data and it will upload the latest file onto your USB stick. On the graph screen, you are able to populate the graph with the last, in, last install from the tool. One thing to note is that every time that you install a tie, it will reset. So you need to go to the graph screen and then hit refresh if it does not show up. It does take a little bit before it populates, but it will populate. Here is the loading bar that shows when it's populated and when it's complete. On this graph screen, there is also the table, and this shows the punch velocity of the last 30 ties. This shows the most recent install going to the 30th, and then it will continue to refresh automatically. Here's a breakdown of the IT8000 subsystems. The tool is powered by a motor and gearbox which drives the tension system. The IT8000 is a little different than the 6000 where the band is actually inserted at about a 30 degree angle into the tool. This is for the two wheels that are powered by that motor. After it is inserted, the cylinder 
activates pinching the two wheels together, allowing the motor to tension the band. Once that is tensioned, the punch subsystem is activated with this cylinder here and the trigger mechanism here, which allows the punch to pre-charge and accelerate the punch much faster than a typical cylinder. And lastly, there is the cut subsystem, which involves this cylinder and these linkages here, which cut the band after installation.